So newspaper accounts say that a Dr. J.F. Bug came to town around 1876 to practice medicine, bringing with him his daughter Mary. The two Marys, Mary Bug and Mary Cannon, the former Mary Bean, hang with me, would eventually find themselves in a messy legal case. For some reason, Mary Bug came to spend the night with Mary Cannon. Now something happened, we're not sure what, and Mary Cannon accused Mary Bug of stealing two yards of red calico fabric. Oh! <laughs> now two yards of calico would have been worth about 15 cents in 1876, but it would cost 10 or 11 dollars today. So whatever the amount, having his underage daughter accused of theft was enough to enrage Dr. Bug, who filed a lawsuit for slander on oh, her no. behalf, seeking damages of guess how much? $5,000. The equivalent of 120000 in today's money. Ooh. So the lawsuit went to trial in Hartford, and Granville Crawford went there to testify on behalf of his niece, Mary Cannon. And even though Granville was 73 at the time, he decided to make the journey on foot, 11 miles each way. So Tamla, I have to ask, are all your family so fond of walking? <laughs> Explain your long jeans and your good jeans. Well, you know, even in rural Kentucky in 1877, when people thought nothing about walking long distances, Granville's hike to Hartford got a lot of people's attention. It was apparently news in Sulphur Springs. Newspaper accounts and court records are both important sources for our research teams. And Tamla, have you had the chance to do research on other members of your family? A few. A few. And I'm sure, I hope they're all as colorful as what we're unfolding right now, right? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Before we take a closer look at this story, let's hear from one of our team about how they uncover information and what kinds of resources family members can find ex they explore their own forebears. When hunting for your Kentucky ancestors, one of the more challenging record sets to use is court records. While some of these records have been microfilmed for easier access in libraries and archives, many important portions still reside in paper form at the State Archives in Frankfurt or on site at the original Courthouse of Creation, which means you may need to plan a field trip to obtain access. The first thing to remember about court records is that there were several different types of records created and filed with the local court, depending on the time frame you were researching. For example, you may encounter early divorce records, naturalization documentation, coroner's inquests, deeds, circuit court order books, civil case files, court dockets, and even criminal case files. Each county may have arranged their files a bit differently, so be on the lookout for loose books that may stand alone or have missed the microfilming process. When you know what type of information you are looking for and can define it based on legal terms, you can look for the corresponding record set, again, potentially located on microfilm or in original paper packets. In Kentucky, most courthouses are located in the county's largest city, often referred to as the county seat. But be careful, in a few of the counties with large urban populations, two courthouses can exist. Since we are focused on finding family information, which court records are my favorite? Any court case file with testimony, which can be found in many different scenarios. Civil cases, chancery, divorce, pension affidavits, and criminal cases. Testimonies and or affidavits lift the ancestors' voices from the obscurity of time. With page after page of transcribed statements and accounts, you can learn complex details about daily life, family and friend connections, personality traits, occupations, and education. By reading their words, you can learn how they express themselves and even get an impression of the feelings or emotions they were experiencing at the time. Court cases can truly give you a glimpse of your ancestors' lives that is unlike any other record you may uncover outside of a personal family collection. Welcome to Expri, an organization all about care and craft. And as Kentuckians, we know a thing or two about both. It's the recipe for good bourbon and good banking. Expri is determined to make a difference, simply by being different, much like these Kentucky legends. We've been around for a while, and we know how to handcraft solutions for you, your personal financial cheerleader. 
We're Expree Credit Union, and this is Spirited Banking. Every family has at least one mystery. And as a member of the Kentucky Historical Society, you can unlock the past through our incredible collection of genealogy resources, available both online and here in our library. Our team can help you discover unknown family histories for a fraction of the cost of a DNA test kit. Call or visit to learn more. Become a member and let's find your Kentucky ancestors.